Now, when we say ISLM, ISLM is simply IS and then LM, okay? ISLM is broken into two. We have IS and then LM. Now, when we talk about IS, IS simply means investment savings model, all right? Investment savings model. Now, this investment savings model is actually the equilibrium achieved in the goose market, all right? When we look at the market for goods and services in the goods market, the equilibrium achieved in the goods market is the IS. That is the investment savings model. Why do we say that? Now, we say this because when the goods market is in equilibrium, the aggregate supply, which is the same as the output represented by Y is equal to aggregate expenditure, which is the same as aggregate demand. So when you break this down, we have Y is equal to C plus I plus J. When we are focusing on a closed economy with government intervention. So when we expand this, we will now have Y is equal to, we now expand the C. So C is C naught plus C1 Y D. All right, C1 Y D. And then um plus I plus J. Okay. Now we are going to do some mathematics. In math, anything you do to the left hand side, you have to do the same thing to the right hand side. All right. So we have Y is equal to C plus I plus J, all right, let's keep to this. If we expand it this way, you get the same answer, but it makes the calculation cumbersome. So we have Y is equal to C plus I plus J. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to subtract taxes from both sides. So when you subtract taxes from both sides, we have Y minus T is equal to C plus I plus J minus T, all right? Now I'm going to send the C to the left-hand side. So then we will have Y minus T minus C is equal to I plus J minus T, all right? So we all know that Y minus T is disposable income. So this will give us Y D. Because income minus taxes is disposable income minus consumption is equal to I plus J minus T. Then disposable income minus consumption is actually private savings. So this is equal to I plus J minus T, okay? So I'm going to send that J and T to the left-hand side. So then we have S minus J plus T is equal to I. It's the same as saying S plus T minus J is equal to I. S plus T minus J is equal to I, okay? Now, what we must realize is that this T minus J is government taxes minus government expenditure. So that is actually government savings. Because remember, taxes is an income to government. And then government expenditure is its expenses. So once taxes exceed government expenditure, we are going to have government savings or public savings, all right? And then um, when we add this S, which is the private savings, you now have total savings. So the total savings in an economy is equal to the private savings plus public savings. And holding other factors constant, that must be equal to the investment in the economy. All right, so that is why we are saying that for the boost market to achieve equilibrium, Y should be equal to A, which we will solve and come and get savings to be equal to what investment. So always the boost market is in equilibrium when savings is equal to investment. Now let's try and demonstrate that on the graph. So let's 
So here, when we draw our equilibrium graph, all right? So when we draw, we are going to find the equilibrium for the goose market. When we draw it this way, and we already know our 45%, all right? Which is the, uh, the equilibrium line. So we have 45% here. And then we know that the aggregate expenditure curve is not 45 degrees because of issues of marginal propensity to consume, all right? So we have the slope this way. So at equilibrium, this is where we achieve the equilibrium, all right? Now, the IS curve has Now the IS curve has um, interest rate on the X axis, sorry, on the Y axis and has income on the X axis, okay? But for the equilibrium um, curve in the goose market, we have income here, we have aggregate expenditure here. And we all know that this line is AE is equal to Y. And then this line is, um the aggregate expenditure now we are going to look at the effects of investment on the equilibrium now remember that the caveat here is that we are removing please somebody has opened the video please close it right the caveat here is that we are removing the assumption we are removing the assumption that investment, we are removing the assumption that investment is autonomous. To assume that investment is induced by interest rates. So we are going to remove the assumption that says that investment is autonomous and then assume that investment is induced by interest rates. Now, I want you to know that when we are talking about investment in the goods market, we are not talking about financial investment. It has nothing to do with shares, bonds, stocks, etc. We are looking at investment in the goods market. So we are looking at investment in capital goods. Okay, let's say FM goes to buy new machines, FM goes to buy new plant property and equipment. All those things will expand the productive capacity of the firm. That is the kind of investment we are talking about. We are not talking about investment in financial assets. Now remember that from the circular flow of income, okay, once there is a leakage from household or once households are saving, there is a leakage from the national income flow. And when that leakage leaks, okay, when that savings leaks from the system, that savings goes into the financial market and that financial market transforms that money for, to firms, and those firms come and borrow from the financial market to go and do investment. So in essence, the interest rate, okay, on the borrowing that is done by firms to go and invest, once the interest rate goes up, that interest rate is going to reduce investment because then to become expensive for these firms to go and borrow, to make their investment in the goods market. So always investment has a negative relationship with the rate of interest, all right? Investment in the goods market always have a negative relationship with the interest rate. Now, remember also that this aggregate expenditure is constituent as C, that's consumption, plus investment, plus government expenditure. Let's remember that. So then if investment expenditure goes down, this curve is going to shift down. 
if investment expenditure goes up, the curve is going to shift up. So if investment expenditure goes down, the aggregate expenditure curve will go down. The reason is that investment expenditure is one of the components of aggregate expenditure. So I'll name this AE1, all right? Now let's assume that the initial income was here, that's why at, let's say, um, a certain interest rate. Just a moment. So at a certain interest rate. Now, um, just a moment, yeah. So at a certain interest rate, so let's say I not. That was the initial equilibrium. Now, when interest rates shift from I not to I one, okay, it's going to reduce the amount of investment we make. That is why the aggregate expenditure curve also shifts downwards from AE not to AE one. Now, once it shifts downwards, what it means is that the national income is going to reduce. The equilibrium now becomes this point. So it's going to reduce. So when we draw it at this new interest rate level, we will have this point. So this point and this point are the two equilibrium um, points. So we will just draw a line to join these two equilibrium points, all right? And once we draw a line to join these two equilibrium points, we have what we call the IS curve, IS curve. So the IS curve is just a combination of interest rate and national income, okay? The IS curve shows the equilibrium in the goose market, okay? It shows the equilibrium in the goose market by plotting interest rate against national income, all right? That is the IS curve. Now, this therefore means that the only factor that will lead to a movement along the IS curve is the interest rate. Interest rate is the only factor that can lead to a movement along the IS curve. Because if interest rate shift further to here, let's say I2, what will happen is that the equilibrium aggregate expenditure will also fall, all right? It will also fall to AE2, okay? That one too will also fall to AE2, okay? So what, what, what I'm saying is that the only factor that will lead to a movement along this IS curve is the interest rate. Now, what are the factors that cause a bodily shift in the IS curve? Now, remember that any factor that causes a bodily shift in the IS curve it has nothing to do with interest rate because the interest rate is the only factor that will lead to a movement along the curve. So any factor that leads to increases in income, all right, without interest rate involvement, that factor will lead to a shift. So technically we are talking about the gain, okay? The reason why we focus on gain is that, you see, interest rate even has a way of affecting consumption. Because remember that in the consumption function, autonomous consumption is either you are borrowing to consume or you are disabling, okay? So then interest rate even affects consumption. So it can lead to a movement along the line. But the sure factor that will not lead to a movement along the line, but a bodily shift is government expenditure, all right? or what we call a fiscal policy, fiscal, F-I-S-C-A-L, fiscal policy, yeah. So then the fiscal policy will definitely lead to a shift in the AE, the aggregate expenditure care, but then it has nothing to do with what interest rate. What am I saying? What I'm saying is that at this same interest rate, let's say I not, there can be a new Y, okay? There can be a new Y with this same interest rate I not. There can be a new Y, and this Y will be as a result of a shift in the AE curve. 
all right? It will be as a result of a shift in the AE curve. It will be as a result of a shift in the AE curve. And we all know that the AE curve can shift when government expenditure changes. So when government expenditure changes, there will be a new equilibrium income. Let me name it YE. All right. But this YE will occur at the same interest rate. The interest rate remains unchanged because government expenditure has nothing to do with interest rates. So once we draw a line to pass through this point, we will realize that there will be a bodily shift of the IS. There will be a bodily shift of the IS. So then, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that fiscal policy in terms of government expenditure and government taxes, those are the factors that can lead to a bodily shift of the IS curve. But interest rate changes will lead to what? A movement on the IS curve. All right, so this is the equilibrium of the goose market. This is the equilibrium of the goose market. 